What's up, everybody? It's AJ with eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be checking out the Malone Runway HM4. It's going to be a platform style bike rack. Holds up to four bikes. We got it fully loaded right here, you can see. It holds them down with these hooks on the top tube, applying pressure, holding them in place. Let's check it out. One thing right up front is because of the way the hook pushes down on the bike frames. Now it is padded, so it's not going to damage your bike frame, but I don't suggest putting a carbon fiber bike on this one just because you don't want any frame contact on those. The frames can be a little delicate. You don't want to damage them or scratch them up at all. Another thing would be when you want to do a alternative frame bike or kids bike, you might have to get an adapter bar with it so that the hook will make contact with the frame. If the frames come down at a different angle or a little bit lower, it'll be more difficult to get that on there. But with the adapter bar, it'll work just fine. One thing I do like is that the top hook here on the hand knobs actually lock. This is in the lock position now, so it's just gonna free spin. So you can't tighten or loosen it or move this at all. It just helps you out if you were to leave this outside unattended. Let's say you ran into the gas station or something real quick. Nobody can come up here and mess with your bikes. The only negative side to it, as you can see that we had the kid's bike on the inside. Normally we put it here on the outside, but the hooks would run into each other because they're on the same center mass. So theoretically you could loosen up this one, slide that hook up and get the kid's bike out but you wouldn't be able to do that on those two bikes up there because they're the same height. So those hooks aren't gonna move. You're gonna be able to, not gonna be able to get those off of there. This one you can kind of solve with running a cable lock through there though, and that'll keep it locked nice and tight to your bike rack. So looking down here at the base, you can see the wheel trays and they are adjustable. You got the hand knobs here on the inside and they can slide up and down just to adjust for different wheel bases. Now the wheel tray itself will fit wheels that are three and a half inches wide we didn't have any problems, we were loading up all these bikes, but you can adjust this just for those instances when you're throwing the bikes on there. If the handlebars are hitting seats or maybe the handlebars are longer and hitting other handlebars down there, you can adjust the trays to kind of move the bike this way or over here, just to kind of adjust it and get around those issues. Down here at the wheel tray still, you have the hook and loop fastener. So it's really easy just to peel back and move around and it can adjust all the way down the tray wherever you want to put it. You can even completely unthread it and take it off there when you're not using it just so it's not hanging around. But then when you go to use it, it's just easy to wrap right back and attach. Now it's not really pulling down or pushing down on the tire. It's just here for safety, just in case it was to pop up or something, it would keep it down in that tray. With the bike rack fully loaded, we got all four bikes. It will tilt away this way, but it is a little convoluted. You're gonna need two people Right now I got my buddy Zach on the other end. He's gonna lift up, taking the pressure off of this pin so it's easy to remove this. this is what we're gonna do first. So then you can kinda twist and pull it out. That was pretty easy. He can set it back down. It does have a stop. There's a plate at the top that keeps it from going down. Now I'll go to the backside and show you how it tilts it away. Whereas it does tilt away, there are some issues with it. It's not exactly easy to do. I recommend keeping that second set of hands around just to help you lift it back up when you tilt away. Even tilt away is a little bit of a process. So you have to lift, you have to pull out on it to get it past that pin and then it'll tilt down. But since our vehicle is kind of low to the ground, this is gonna go all the way to the ground. So when you grab it, just make sure your arms aren't under here cause this might dig in on it while you're lifting it down. Try and grab maybe back here by the base and the cradle and be careful as you pull out and tilt to the ground to not smash your hands on the ground either. So I'm gonna try and show you how to do it here. I'm gonna grab here towards the middle cause I can get a better pull on it to pull it out and then slowly lower it down. Also watch your head on any handlebars that are above you or any pedals that are around here. Cause remember you're going all the way to the ground. It's not a stop. So kind of pull up and out. And with that, you can pop open your back. Just in case you forgot something back here or you want to load something up that you forgot to do right before you leave. Now I suggest maybe just going through your back seat instead because this is kind of, like I said, convoluted, it's not easy to tilt away. I guess it's a good feature to have just in case you need it, but I'd find another way around that because now this is where you're gonna need the second set of hands to help you lift it back up and slide into place. We just found it easier to have somebody else on the other side Grab the sidebars and do it that way rather than trying to do it yourself at this end that's touching the ground. The same second set of hands, we're just going to grab the bars here at the bottom, lift up 
and push it back in. Having that second set of set hands just makes it that much easier to get it back up on that stop. Just like that. The next thing I'd be wondering about is how it's gonna handle out on the road. So we're gonna take it out in the parking lot and put it through the test. We're gonna go over some of the speed bumps real quick, just to test it on uneven surfaces or any bumps you might hit while you got it on the back of your vehicle. This is a four bike platform, so it's probably gonna move back and forth a little more than other ones. It is bouncing around. The bikes are steady, but it is moving pretty good. The bikes all stay nice and tight in the cradles though, so that's good. Looks like there's a little bit of shakiness to it, but the bikes aren't moving, so that's the most important part. Come back over here to the more open side of the parking lot so we can speed up a little bit and do some aggressive turns. With it all clear, we can go ahead and speed up, go back and forth. It looks like there's a little sway back and forth and a little bit of bouncing, but the bikes didn't move, so again, that's the most important part. I think it's one of those things where the bike rack sticks out so far from the back of the vehicle, that's why it does have that shake. There's just a lot of bike rack back there. It's pretty heavy. The anti-rattle is definitely doing its job though from keeping it from vibrating or shaking a lot and you know, shaking those bikes out of the trays. They stay in there pretty nicely. The hooks are down there nice and tight. So it's holding that bike down. We went out and checked it out after after this last stoppage and looked at the bikes to make sure they hadn't moved at all and they had not, so that's good. Something to note is that the weight capacity in this bike rack is gonna be 33 pounds per bike. So you saw it shaking back and forth just a little bit when we were going out in the parking lot. Just wanna make sure you keep it underneath that. That way you don't have any issues when you're driving down the road. So again, it's just 33 pounds per bike. When we're moving the bikes, we're gonna move the first one, just easier to do that, get out of the way. We're gonna come down here to the wheels trays first and undo the hook and loop. Just peel it back. Just like that, get it out of the way. I'll go do it on the front tire as well. Now with those out of the way, we can loosen the hook. This one doesn't lock, so it's always gonna be ready to go. Just turn that, it loosens up the center, and then slide it up. I'm gonna tighten it back down up here just so it doesn't slide back down on you. And then this is where this kind of gets in the way just a little bit, but we found that if we load it with the backside first, we didn't have any issues with the handlebar. So now we can just go out like this. You can fit around the mast and the other bike. Let me set this aside. And normally this is where this part would be an issue with the four bike, so many bikes, it'd be kind of hard to reach around this one to access those bikes and even get it out of there. Luckily, the center mass folds down. So you just pop this pin at the bottom. It's gonna fold that way. Let's lower this one just a little bit so it doesn't make contact with the handlebars up there. With it folded out of the way, now I have far easier access to these bikes back here. Something else to note on these locking hand knobs is that once you have it in the unlock position, you cannot remove the key. So you'll have to tighten it back up and then turn it to get the key out of there. Now, when you're kind of taking the bikes off there and it's empty, you can run the straps around the wheel trays like this. That way they store nice and neat and they're not just flapping around when you're driving down the road. Another thing is that the center mask will store like this. There's two different holes. This is the hole when it's upright and this is the one where it's gonna be staying laid down like this. We can just run that pin with this one here. and that's gonna secure it into place. There we go. Just latch it, and now it can stay like this. With the bikes unloaded, we can take a closer look at the rack itself. The whole thing's made out of a black powder coat steel, so it's gonna hold up when you are out in the elements, if it rains or something like that, it's not gonna rust or corrode on you. Another thing now I can show that the bikes are gone is how easily these cradles slide up and down and adjust. So you can adjust a bunch of different wheel sizes, or wheel bases, sorry. Another thing is the cradles are gonna be about 11 inches apart. So that's just keep in mind with handlebars and seats, you know, taking a look at the bikes you're gonna throw on there, you can help you kinda picture if it's gonna work for you or not. Now for some measurements. 
If you go from the center of the hitch pin to the closest point, it's gonna be about here, that's gonna be nine inches. And if we go from the center of the hitch pin again, all the way out to the furthest point, which looks like it's this hook, that's gonna be 52 inches. So that's quite a bit added to the back of your vehicle. Just keep in mind that it's back there. We're always trying to warn customers that, you know, if you're backing up in a tight parking space or even pulling your own garage, just remember it's back there so you don't shut the garage on it or have any issues when you're in the parking lot. But you can take a little bit out of that because it will fold up towards the back of your vehicle. So you're just coming over here. So I'm just gonna lift up like we did to lower it. Now you can kind of see a little bit better what I'm talking about without the bikes on there. The pin's gonna pop out pretty easily. And then you can just tilt it up. Now what you gotta do to tilt it up, is you gotta pull it out just a little bit. If you wanna come in here and see what we're talking about, I keep saying to pull it out to lower, raise it, you can see it come out from that overhang there. And that's what allowed it to tilt down or fold up. And that's what we're pushing back into place. So now it's ready to tilt up. And it sits down on this bolt here. And then to keep it up here like this, you just put the pin up and match up that hole. With the folded up, we can get a couple more measurements. We're gonna see what the closest point to your vehicle is gonna be. So we're gonna go from the center of that hitch pin all the way out here. It's gonna be seven inches right there. And then the furthest part, again, center of the hitch pin to out here, it's gonna be 15 inches. So one other thing to mention about the closer measurement is this is closer to the vehicle, but the top of the vehicle, the higher you get, the more it tapers off. So there's more space up here and there's less to worry about. Even if I shake it back and forth, you can see it's not getting any closer to the vehicle, so you're not gonna have any issues with that. Looking down at the hitch, you can see it only fits two inch by two inch hitches. as an anti-rattle hitch pin here. That's gonna take a lot of the shake and play out of the base. You see there's not a lot of movement down here. If any, looks like there's not. I can shake the whole car back and forth. There's a little movement here, but that's where the pins are, so that's where that's coming from. But otherwise, it's nice and sturdy in there. Something I would recommend to add to this is the e-trailer hitch aligning tool. It's a collar that's gonna go around right here. You'll tighten that up, and because this bike rack is a platform, so it's a little bigger and bulkier than other ones, lifting up and getting the hitch and lining up that hole can be kind of a pain. But with that hitch aligner on here, you go to lift it up, it hits this collar and aligns this on the first try every single time. It really helps out in getting this installed and getting on your way. Something else I'd like to point out is it has a seven and a half inch rise here. So that does get it up and off the ground. So even if your hitch is lower to the ground, kind of like this one, this gets a platform rack up here. So you won't have any clearance issues when you're going up steep driveways or big hills. Overall, I think it's a good entry level platform style bike rack. There's just some flaws that I really didn't like with it. Like the tilting away was such a hassle. I'm not sure what positive that would be to try and use. So if you're dead set on getting a platform style rack, there is a Hollywood Racks Destination. I would recommend over this one. It's just built overall better, less spacing issues with the cradles and the hooks. I just think overall it'll do better for a platform style four bike rack. Now, if you don't want a platform style rack, you were just looking at something, I would also recommend the Swagman Original 4. That's a hanging style bike rack. The plate comes down with the handles on top, really holds those frames nice and tight. The bikes do not sway at all. And there's less loading and unloading issues with that bike rack. So. I like that one too, but it's really what you're looking to get out of the bike rack. So kind of just think about what's important to you and compare to those and pick the best one for yourself and your bikes. Well, I think that about does it. Thanks for hanging out and I hope this helped.